Happy Monday to you on this fifth week after the Epiphany. We've got just this week and one more week of daily prayers left to go. I mean, of course, we can always continue to do daily prayers, but I'm in as far as this series. I hope you've been enjoying it so far. Hope you're at least learning some things that you can apply to your own prayer life. Later on this week, I'm going to have some visitors popping in on some of these videos, just exp just sharing, you know, just some of their experiences with their prayer life, and uh, just to let you hear some other. Uh, ideas and, and just other things and other experiences that people have had uh, with prayer in their spiritual walk. Uh, as of today, we are less than one month away from the kickoff event, the Linton Retreat for the North Church Indie Youth. Really excited about this. March 5th, even if you're not going to the retreat, on March 5th at 6 p.m., there's a Mitch McVicker concert in the Fellowship Hall, who is a GMA Dove Award winner. You don't want to miss that. Invite your friends. Let them know. 6 o'clock, Fellowship Hall, Mitch McVicker. But if you are one of the youth, grades 7 through 12, the retreat will be lasting all day Saturday on the 5th and all day Sunday. We're not staying overnight just as a COVID precaution, but we will be at the church all day long. And it's free. And that's the best part. Since it's our kickoff event, we thought, hey, let's not charge people to get back together at this point. Let's just have an awesome event and uh, just give everybody a chance to come out and be a part. So please sign up if you're interested, grade 7 through 12 for the retreat. Everybody's invited for the concert. And then on Sunday, on the 6th at 4 p.m., we are also kicking off our usual weekly youth group Sunday night. So a lot happening in that one weekend. Mark your calendars. Uh, with that, I know it's Monday, so let's pray. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Please join me in Psalm 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory, because of your love and faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold, made by human hands. They have mouths, but cannot speak, eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear, noses, but cannot smell. They have hands, but cannot feel, feet, but cannot walk nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two, or at the most three, should speak, one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. 
Or did the word of God originate with you? Or are you the only people it has reached? If anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the Spirit, let them acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. But if anyone ignores this, they will themselves be ignored. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues. But everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, the theme here in Paul's writing is good orderly worship. Uh, most Bibles even have like subheadings or headings above different passages. And in my Bible uh, that I was using to, to study for this, it even says at the top, good orderly worship. Unfortunately, this is one of those passages that has often been misused uh, by the church to keep women from being in leadership roles in the church. But I think when, when whenever we're reading scripture, especially passages like this, we have to remember exactly the context of, of what Paul or the writer is, is writing about. In this situation, there was a specific problem in this specific particular church with just chaotic worship. People were, it was just, it was getting so disorderly and so chaotic that uh, nothing good was really happening. It was just one big chaos scene. Um, and on top of that, there was also a lot of uh, different spiritualities in the area. And one of those had uh, role, specific roles for women uh, as far as leadership. And so in this church itself, uh, there were some of these women from the other spirituality coming in and trying to sway believers. And they were trying to uh, teach things that just weren't right uh, and was uh, leading people down you know, a path that wasn't good for them. And so uh, there was a lot in happening right here that Paul's referring to. And I think it's unfortunate that we've taken one line out of that and say, well, uh, you know, just women can't teach at all. And, and there's been a lot of hurt because of that. And a lot of uh, the church has been hurt in a lot of ways because of that, because we've had some leadership from some amazing women that uh, we may have missed out on because of, of people just taking one, one line and not putting it in its context. When you really dive into what Paul's saying here, the, the problem was the chaos. The problem was the disorder. The problem was that people weren't able to have intelligent conversations because everything was just too crazy and too wild. Um, and by Paul's telling us that when we come together, we should at least have some order to our worship and at least have a way for the Spirit to move and a way for people to to be able to listen to the Spirit. Because sometimes I think we get so chaotic in life that it just tunes out the voice of God and it tunes out um, just good logical thinking and just a, a way to sit down and, and listen to what God is really trying to say to us. Paul's trying to help us get some structure using the cultural context to do so. And I think our lesson that we take away from this as readers today in 2022, it's not that women shouldn't have leadership roles. That's not really what Paul's big issue was here. The, the lesson we take from this is that when we come together, let's do our best to be 100% mindful of what we're doing, why we're here. We're here to worship. We're here to be a community. We're here to love folks. We're here to love God. And we're here to serve people. And, and, and ultimately, we're here because of Christ and because of our ability to, to to come together like this and freely worship. So um, that's the big takeaway for me today. I um, hope you can chew on that and take something from that as well. Amen. Oh God, the mother of us all, pour out your Holy Spirit on our hearts and minds that we may know how to reject evil and injustice and receive the peace and power that flows through our covenant together in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So as you start your week, remember that you are forgiven of your sins. Remember that you are God's child. And remember that you are loved. Go in grace and live your true calling out through the resurrected Christ. Have an awesome Monday. See you guys tomorrow.